This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Feline friends, this is Michelle Fern, your host on Catitude. Very special show today. I have with me a, one of our show hosts from another show, of course, Cheryl Kay, and she hosts Unleashed by Cheryl Kay. And we're going to talk about how to uh, detect signs that your cat is aging and what you can do about it. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Looking for a dental treat that does more for your dog? Daily Dose is a two-in-one chew that pairs a daily dental scrub with powerful supplements to help with the biggest health concerns facing our dogs. Daily Dose was developed by vets to be simple to use and super effective. Plus, dogs love the taste. Available for joint, skin, heart health, or calming. Daily Dose, your pet's daily dose of awesome. Visit yourpetsdailydose.com to save $3 on your first bag with promo code PETLIFE. That's yourpetsdailydose.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. I know that between us, I think we have a zoo of cats. We have like eight all together. And, you know, one of the things about cats is sometimes you don't know when they come to you how old they are. And it's a guessing game. Like Dennis, he walked in the door. I don't know how old he is. I'm, I'm guessing, you know, he's around 10 or 11. What was the story with your cats? Well, thank you uh, for having me on your show. It's always fun. Well, I have two elderly cats. My Cheyenne, I got her as a kitten in 2004, so we know how old she is, 16. And Daniel, they told me he was seven when I got him. So I think he's about 16, 17. They're elderly. I've had cats 17, 18, 19, and 21 years old. But I have to say, I've never seen the signs of aging like I have now with these two. I mean, Cheyenne... They're affectionate, they eat, they drink, but Daniel is definitely showing signs of dementia, and so is Cheyenne, definitely. You know, the thing with cats, and in having done so many catitude shows, I've learned from so many different experts, the thing with cats is they hide things. It's not like yeah, dogs where you could just see it, you know, see the signs and, and dogs kind of tell you, you know, this aches, this isn't going right. They're more vocal and you can just see what's going on with them more. Cats are more secretive. And, right. you know, that's for any time from what I've learned. It's it's whether they're young and have an issue or, you know, middle-aged or older, what have you. But I think when they're older, they kind of hide the signs of aging also, as well as, you know, how they hide the signs when they're getting ill. I think they kind of hide the signs of aging. It's hard for us to know that they're getting older. You know, he's lost some weight, which is a sign when they get older. He was a robust Maine Coon and he's deaf. And I've, I've did some research. Dementia could, one of the signs is deafness. Although, you know, I guess he hears my foot, you know, steps and I could talk loud, which I normally do. And they stare at the wall, which is another sign. But I really think in all honesty, one of the things that they did say is any kind of profound change in their life. And I had major construction here and we moved to a hotel for three months. So furniture went out, which freaked them out totally because, you know, animals. They don't like change and dogs don't like change, but cats really, really do cats not like, like their change. own environment. That's why when people go away, the cats stay home and people come and take care of them. Dogs either could go out, go to somebody's or they go to a pet hotel. But I noticed this right around that time. And now things are getting a little even more strange, you know, constipation, drinking water. They eat, they're affectionate. You would never know, but it's the beginning. So I'm definitely, and waking me up at all hours of the night because their clock is off. It's very much like Alzheimer's in in humans. 
But wait, let, Cheryl, let me ask you a question. So everything with Danny was pretty okay until you had the changes in your household where you had to leave the house for your um, Three for months. home repair. But things right. were okay up till then? Or do you think that kind of, he was getting old, but that just triggered it and, and amplified it? I think it amplified it. You know, I moved less than a year ago. And then my change happened here. He saw all of his stuff leaving the house. And then we were in a hotel. I mean, it was a very nice hotel, but he didn't really care. So there, and he's old and I don't really know how old he really was when I got him. They said seven, he could have been eight. He could have been nine. I mean, he's affectionate. So he doesn't have all of the symptoms, but he has enough for me to have a wake up call. And I'm going to be taking him to the vet just to satisfy myself. But, you know, even if this didn't happen, I'm entering a new phase with them for sure. That's for sure. And, you know, I think it's right on when you're saying about the change of moving out of your home for three months, because I'm going to tell you a little story about Dennis. And it does have to do with Daniel in a sense, but Dennis is part Maine Coon. And that that long hair, if you're not diligent with brushing all the time, and even if you are, they can get matted. So Dennis every so often has to get a shave. Whenever he gets a shave, Charlotte and Molly are like evil enemies to him. So this time, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 though. When this time, my significant other, he said, well, don't have them shave too much. I said, well, I don't know if that could be the story. I go, but I will tell them, do not use any kind of perfume or any kind of scented shampoo. No scent at all. Because I figured scent would be the trigger. You know, cats, I mean, their sight, it's, it wouldn't be so much that he looked different. It would be the scent. No, so, definitely the smell. Well, yeah. I don't think it's so much how he looks. I think cats are more triggered by smell. Anyway, even with no scent on him at all, it still took over, I think, almost like two and a half months before they stopped hissing at him because he still has the short hair. He still doesn't look like how he used well, to. That's a long but it time. Took, it took a long time for his smell to become like him because he, he was just clean. He didn't smell like Dennis to, to Charlotte and Molly. He smelled like, you know, a clean cat. And it took a while for him to smell like he smells. And so if that, tr just something that subtle caused, you know, so much, um, I guess, animosity among the cats. I mean, they didn't attack him, but they were just nasty to him no, for a yes. while. I mean, the same thing with Cheyenne. Whenever I, I did, you know, because he's Maine Coon and I brush him all the time and we got rid of the matting situation. Plus, I'm very good with a scissor. I'll tell you that. I could get. No, right but my point it. is, if this kind of a thing, if this small kind of thing, just just making him clean could trigger such, you know, it, it upset like the uh, the threesome, you know, the indoor threesome of cats. So I can just imagine having to physically move Cheyenne out of his environment and or Daniel out of his environment. And it was entirely different for three months that you know, it's just a huge change. I'm just comparing the changes, how just a small right, change with I one took, can upset. When I take Daniel to get groomed, I did once by himself because he's got the long hair and, you know, no big deal. But when he came back, two days she hissed at him and then he smelt like us again. But I have to tell you, when I went to the hotel, Cheyenne took up the habit. She wants to take a shower with me. How do you like that? What? She meows me to go in the shower she meows for me to come out. And then once I'm out, she jumps in. And I, I didn't understand it, but she's doing it here also. They, <laughs> so all of a sudden she wants to be clean? Different habits for sure. Like I mean, and in reading about this, it could be renal failure, even though, you know, we say, oh, they're drinking. But that could be a sign. Blood pressure, you know, their adrenal glands. That's why if anybody has a pet out there that suddenly is a change or you're just realizing it now, you should take them to the vet. They say vitamin E and antioxidants are very good help. But once it's to the point, I mean, you know, they're, they're elderly. You know, there's no turning it back. It's just maintaining. Exactly. I mean, my, my cats are still young-ish. I think Dennis is the oldest and he's, I think, 11. But I'm going through this with my dog, Zeus, Mr. Z. He's um, two months over 15. So 15 years, two months. 
And, you know, I'm seeing he's eating less. He's what he weighs less than he ever did. I've gone to the vet with any kind of subtle changes and had him checked out. He's on medication. He's just his stomach is a little more sensitive than normal. So I'm keeping that in mind and just trying to keep him happy. You know, that was my first clue with Daniel. I changed foods because he would throw up. That's one of the symptoms also about this cognitive thing that happens to them. So I checked off three of the, you know, the looking at the wall, the change in eating, the meowing. Daniel never meowed. And if I walk into the kitchen, anytime they want to eat, they got food there. It's just this, their clock is off. That's what I think it is. But the weird thing is, here we are in 2020. I never had any of my other animals who lived to old age have any of these symptoms. That's what I'm saying. Things are changing. There's more illnesses for animals like there are for people. I think it's because we're thinking, you know, animals are, they become our, our kids, you know, and there's better research for animals. There's better care for animals. There's um, better treatment and there's better education for the pet parent that's out there, especially with social media and just the internet in general. There's just a lot of great, hey, Pet Life Radio that we have, I don't know what, nine or 10 vet shows. There's so much great information out there. So what, right. what maybe in the past we saw, you know, oh, you know, he's just getting old. Now we look at our fur babe and say, okay, and I'm saying he because the one I have now is is a dog that's old, but you know, okay, well, he has arthritis in his back legs. Before we would just say, oh, he's getting old. You know, now we know we can be more specific about it. Or I was just at the vet actually yesterday with Mr. Z and we thought he's deaf, but the vet <laughs> whistled very sharply and he cocked his head one way. So he said, I guess he can hear out of one ear. I go, well, it can't hear direction to sound then, but at least he could hear something, you know? So I was, you know, I was using a whistle for Daniel. I mean, if I clap my hands really loud, you know, he stays by the door. This is a new thing. He likes to now lay on the little rug by my door when I come in and out. He doesn't move at all when I leave, when I come back. So I literally have to step over him. But you know what I find amazing though? What's very peculiar is how subtle the changes are and how we respond to them. Because only, you know, the owner of the pet would really realize it. Although I've had people come in who've seen Daniel, who haven't seen him for a while and can see he looks like an old man now. He's just not that brightness that he had before, which is fine. I, I still love him, you know, you know, when you're 64. But it's just amazing how we, the owners, recognize it the little subtleties of our pets it, of that's course. that's what's unusual but you know even with dogs i've had dogs 19 years old 17 years old 15 years old that's a pretty old age i think they changed that it's not seven years for every year no, anymore. no it's not it's not 15 what it is i think the first couple of years and i think it's for cats too like by the time they're three, they're not really, or four, they're not really like, um, what would it be, 28? They're more like, in, you know, 30 something. And then as right. they get older, the age doesn't accelerate as fast. So if he's 15, I think that's equivalent to maybe 80 something, 90 something in people years. So, you know, you expect to slow down around that age. He's, you know, not who he was, but. But he'll still run a little. Well, I mean, no, well, know, sometimes- he doesn't really run too much, but he walks. He can walk on his own. He gets stuck sometimes and can't get out. Like if he slides, he sleeps next to me on the floor. So on his own little bed. So he was getting stuck, like sliding under the bed and getting stuck. So I had to put a pillow there (laughs) so he wouldn't get stuck. And he stopped barking. You know how you said Daniel started meowing? Zeus stopped barking. The one time he barked is when he was stuck. So it was a shocker because he hadn't barked in months, you know? And I have a yapper, yep. Mr. Nikki yaps all the time. So I guess because Mr. Nikki's so vocal, I didn't even notice that Mr. Zeus stopped barking, you know? Well, see, because he's deaf, he doesn't realize that he never meowed before. Not only is he meowing, he's moving his mouth open and shut because he can't hear. He thinks he is talking. You know, I'm starting to wake up and realize it. It's like, it's like it hit me over the head. Actually, just a day or two ago, I used to joke, my cats have cat dementia, and I really looked it up, and 
it's really a thing. It's really a thing. Let's take a short break and then we'll come back and we'll talk about, you know, I know you've done a lot of research on this, Cheryl, a little bit more about signs of cat dementia and then what you can do to make your cat feel better, you know, in okay. the last couple of years and stuff. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, Michelle Fern here. I have to tell you about Pet Treater. Pet Treater is a gift box for your fur babes that gives you the chance to surprise them with interactive toys, all natural treats, and a whole bunch more. You know, I just got one for Dennis's birthday, but I made sure to get the larger size because I knew Molly and Charlotte would want in on the action too. Let me tell you, it arrived the day before I planned to give it to him. Dennis actually slept next to it the entire time. In the morning when I went to open it, I noticed all these claw marks on the box. They were trying to break into the goods. What a party once I opened the box for them. They had a blast. You know, whether you have a really cute kitty or an adorable doggy or maybe some of each roaming your house, you can tailor the box to fit their needs, including any allergies they have or their size. You know, we all need an excuse to spend more quality time with our fur kids. With a subscription starting as low as $15, you and your furry family members will get to unbox some new surprises together, meaning you'll be spending less money, less time shopping, and more time hanging out. And if you're as obsessed with sharing photos of your pets as I am, you can connect with other animal lovers on the Pet Treater site. Okay, now Pet Treater is giving us this great offer. Go to PetTreater.com and use the coupon code CATITUDE, that's C-A-T-T-I-T-U-D-E, and you'll get 50% off the first month of your subscription. That's PetTreater.com, P E T. T-R-E-A-T-E-R dot com and get ready for some great party times with your fur babes. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio dot com. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We're talking about cat dementia and what you're, what to do when your cats get, you know, old. And hey, your dogs too, even though we're on catitude, you know. And the other thing, Cheryl, it, why it's important to bring your your pet regularly. And some vets also have certain, you know. I know VCA has Care Club, and right. Other vets have other special things to where you can buy a package and you're not charged per visit. There's different, you know, things out there, plus, vet, you know, vet insurance. So there's all kinds of th- ways to, you know, save you money, especially with an older pet when you might be at the vet a little bit more because, you know, they might try a medication and say, hey, come back in two weeks. Let me see how your kitty's doing or your or your doggy's doing and um, just to keep on top of it. But the important thing is, as a pet owner, you have to be on top of it because with cats, like you were telling us, Cheryl, the signs are so subtle. They're so subtle. Cats just are very secretive. They don't want to let you know that well, something is up. So they, they do hide things. I think dogs hide also. But, I mean, if it's an open wound, you could see it. But I know with my dogs, they were getting sick and they try to keep it in. But arthritis, you know, you would see. And wandering, you know, with people, you know, humans with Alzheimer's, they wander. One of the symptoms with cats is they wander around. I have a lot of stuff on my walls. At first I thought, well, they appreciate my art. But (laughs) going to the corner and looking at a wall, no. Little things that you just can't, you can't deny anymore. You know, it's like with people, you know, where do I put the car? Where's my keys? You're with somebody or your mate or a mother or a father and they ask the same questions, the cats don't ask that. Although asking me to feed them after they just ate could be a sign, but... That could be a sign for sure. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. They don't go out. So it is what it is, but I know I'm entering a new phase. What that phase will bring, I'm not going there. Right now, we're all happy. We're going to have dinner later. We'll hang out, but you got to be your responsible owner. You got to know when your animal's are telling you something. Exactly. So, And you were right on with taking your, you know, take your pet to the vet, take your cat to the vet and let the vet check them out, check the vitals, 
And if there is anything up, you know, whether, you know, eating, drinking, whatever. And another sign, and I did some research on this one, another sign is checking the litter box because, and again, my vet was talking to me just yesterday about my dog, but I think there could be some truth for kitties as well. If your kitty's eliminating a lot, that could be that they're not getting any of the nutrients of what they're eating. So if there's any vast changes, you know when you're cleaning a litter box what right. to expect. You know you know what the number ones look like, the number twos look like. If there's a lot of change going on there, then it might be time to also, you know, say, okay, there's something up with the bathroom habits. And you know, yeah, how about time to going check. outside of the litter at times, which Daniel has done on occasion. Outside so. the litter box is also a sign too. If they're always in the litter box, and it could be arthritis because they can't get into the litter box anymore, that's right. a sign that's, too. That's, they said that too, but mine is low. Mine is low. But there's a lot of things. It's thyroid. Cats could have cancer and aimlessly wandering around in the house and confusion. They don't have confusion. You know, I check off maybe three, three tops four, but it's enough for me now to recognize it and be proactive and whatever I need to do for him to be comfortable. You know, Cheyenne, it doesn't seem nothing really phases her, except if I get up to use the restroom in the middle of the night, she thinks that she should eat and she Hits me in the head to try to wake me. Wait, Daniel That's, or Cheyenne wakes you? Oh, Who? Cheyenne. Daniel is a perfect gentleman. He lets her do the dirty work and he just basks in the glory. <laughs> so every time you get up in the, in the middle of the night, they think it's snack time? I can't sleep. She wants affection. But hers is different. His is more profound. I mean, it's subtle that I realize it now, but he's more profound. I think he's older. You know, she's. I got her in 2004. So she's 16 years old, cute as a button. But, you know, you can look into their eyes. They're older cats. It doesn't matter. Well, you, you know, know what? Their eyes are one of the signs of age, too, because they say that in an aging cat, there will be like a blue and white cloudiness of the eye pupil. So, yeah. and that happens, it's cat, to well, dogs also, that. but it, that's one of the signs as well. But if I open up a can of food from across the street, she would hear it, not Daniel. I should try that. I should see if he could hear that. From that would be a good thing. Yes. I'm being sarcastic, okay. of course not. But their main focus in life now is to eat. <laughs> well, <laughs> they want to eat. That's what their joy is. So, you know, you got to monitor that stuff. I always give them, they always have clean water, and I always throw an ice cube in. They love that. I started doing that with Daniel. He seems to really love that makes them feel special, you know, and it, it gives it a little, you know, maybe a little cooler than if it was just there. You know, I have one of those water feeders. Your little the fountain. more they drink, the more they get. Like a fountain, I yeah, guess. Yeah, we, we, we have, a fa- I have a fountain too. They love the fountain. Yeah. We don't throw pennies in our fountain. No, no pennies. But I just think for our listeners that you really just have to be aware and alert if something different happens on a regular basis. How about that? That's how I got tuned into Daniel. Things were changing and the change was starting to become somewhat consistent. Once a week, twice a week, he'd throw up, not hairballs. Maybe he wouldn't go in the litter box, some constipation, not all the time. But now when you put that all together, I think there's something here. So yep, we're going to go to the vet. For sure. And everything you're saying, I've seen the same types of dementia and loss of hearing, loss of appetite, wandering around with Mr. Z. So maybe in aging, cats and dogs aren't all that different. I don't know. No, old age is old age. Right. I bet right. if you had a zoo person on, they would tell us the same thing for the animals that they deal with, you know, the, the vets that work in a zoo. Probably, sure. yeah. Probably. I want to mention one more thing that some people might not think about, but Mr. Z used to like spend a lot of time in the shower. What not on, but he I don't know why. The tile was cooler there. I don't know why. But all of a sudden he stopped going in the shower. And because I he, realized because he doesn't want to, No, but he, he got a little it? bonier and there's no padding in the shower. His padded beds are everywhere else but the shower. So that's something too for your cats, because if your cats are losing some weight, 
they're going to need and need a little more comforting. So they might need a little more, you know, a padded bed or a little padding up in their they cat have a tree. chair that I allow them to sit on. They don't go on my couch. They don't go on my living room furniture. But I have a area rugs here and there. But I do notice now that you say that when Daniel goes to to sit down, you know, like he slides down very slowly. He could have some arthritis, which what are you going to do about that? Nothing. I must have arthritis. You know, we're, you know, you age, but no, he likes his creature comforts, but he's still affectionate. See, those are some of the signs too, if they are not and they get aggressive, but he's still affectionate. He still wants to, you know, hold my hand, so to speak. He always has his hand reached out. He wants me to hold it. Or if I'm on it, Somewhere he'll put his paw on my shoulder. He's very affectionate. He wants to sleep with me still. You know, he's there in the morning. That's a good which, sign. You know, he sleeps with you and he's there in the morning. He stays with you. So that's good. I like to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess in conclusion, I guess the most important thing is be in tune, especially with your older kitties. And, you know, and for those of us that have kitties and dogs, you know, be in tune with your older fur babes and watch for any changes. They might be a little subtle, especially with the kitties, but just watch for the changes. What would you add, Cheryl? Well, because I have two now, at one time I had three cats and two is, is perfect. And I think that they understand between each other what's happening. Daniel loves to clean Cheyenne. Now they still clean themselves. So that's a very good sign. And they still want to be in my company. They're not, let's put it this way. The one thing I do know about cats when they're sick, they hide and they're not hiding. Well, that's good. It's just that I think our listeners should be aware that if there is a change once, twice, three times, it might not happen in the same week or the same month. You just have to be on the lookout, especially if they're older. When people have younger pets, I think they wouldn't really understand or realize something unless it was some drastic, like, you know, they broke a leg, they got cut, something like that. But cats, when they're older, and especially they're indoors, you know, you got to be uh, aware because... You know, I don't want him to be uncomfortable because that's not going to be good. They're my best friends. So I'm going to do whatever I can do. But I'm only taking him. She isn't at a point where there's anything different except that she, her clock is off. And I could deal with that. Big deal. It'll get back to normal. And and there's a time change. That changes them a little bit too. They suggested changing the light in your living area, but I'm not going to do that. You know, that's absurd. I mean, it is what it is. And you know what? All of this talking about, you know, uh, how our pets age, specifically cats, it just makes me want to remind everyone, it's just life. You have the cute little kitties, they grow up, and then they get older. And that's why we always say, and I've mentioned this a few times on Catitude, Cheryl, I'm sure you've mentioned this, that little cute kitty is going to grow up and be a cat, and the cat does age. So when you adopt, it's for life. Oh, for life. So you got to keep that in mind too, you know? That's how I adopted too. I had one and his partner passed away. So I went to get a calico. That would I never had one before. So I wanted to get a calico. When I went to get a calico, as I'm walking out, it was in, in uh, one of those adopt trailers. When I was walking out, Cheyenne stuck her paw out. And I said, okay, but you're right. I brought home two kittens that grew into cats. And, you know, it's wonderful. And uh, Cheyenne is from that time. Daniel, I I don't remember if I have him eight years or nine years. I could look at the paperwork. But other than Cheyenne, who I know when I got her, she was a kitten in 2004. And he was supposedly seven when I got him. Maybe he was eight. Nobody really knows. Out of my whole zoo of six cats, you know, the three outdoor, they're kind of community cats, three indoor and of the two dogs, I only know because Nikki was a rescue from a family member. So he had papers because he's purebred Havanese and he's crazy. And then I only know the date, the true birth date of Molly because she was born on my doorstep. So right. otherwise, I don't know the exact, exact age. Zeus, I'm pretty close because he was from um, an adoption. He was adopted and they were able to guess him pretty close. But the others, I'm not sure. 
But you know, you know when they're getting older. You know what you know. They're not the kitty age, and 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 cats go fast. They're kitties for only you know barely. By the time they're almost a year, they can have litters. So they grow kind of fast. They're in the the middle. Well, they're kitties till I think they're about two or so. But they're in the semi mature, mature, and a little bit older phase of life for a long time. That could be in a twenty year old cat's lifetime. That could be. I think maybe 15 years of that, you know? So something to keep in now, mind. For any of our listeners out there, if you have any uh, tips or if it's happened to you and you want to share anything, you know, you could always contact us at Pet Life Radio. And uh, it would be interesting what other people have gone through because I never thought of cat dementia before. I mean, I said it as a joke because their habits were changing. And then I looked it up and it's a real life thing. It's a real thing and real important. Well, Cheryl, it's been great talking to you about this. And it's, I'm sure, going to bring a lot of awareness to a lot of cat pet parents to for if their cats are older or what to keep in mind when their cats get older. And guys, if you need to want to comment or ask a question or anything about the show, you can reach me at michelle at petliferadio.com. And uh, this time, I want to thank Cheryl very much for coming on Catitude. So thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you for having me. We have to do this again. It was lovely. Sure. Always a lot of fun to have Cheryl Kay on my show. So I want to give a big thanks to Cheryl Kay. Thanks to everyone listening for making Catitude such a popular show. I hope we gave you some great info today. It's, It's always good insight to talk with another show host and get their take on things some great information thanks to my producer mark winter for making me and my guest sound fabulous thanks to my cat crew which is dennis and he's my older dude dennis and molly and charlotte and jethro and sammy and jazz for teaching me everything about cats and thank you uh, mr z and nikki my canine dudes for you know making sure the cats are very entertained So keep listening. We have a lot of great shows coming up. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.